It's official. The one piece of information that we've been waiting on since the beginning of this bear market, since January of 2022, and this was putting together research from some of the top minds in macro, in finance, in the entire global economy here, we concluded that the United States would eventually have to start buying its own debt. And this is based on all of these forces, de-dollarization, global multipolarity, but most importantly, the US seizing money from overseas rivals like Russia and creating distrust in the modern US dollar and the modern US economy. Add in a potpourri of absolutely toxic political activity in Washington, making other countries say what the heck is happening in America and can we really trust their political stability going forward? And we garnish this lovely dish with total distrust in the Fed and macro policies as evidenced by the bond market spinning out of control despite the Fed doing everything they can to control it and you get yourself a recipe for yield curve control. Now, if you've been following this channel, you know that we've been talking about yield curve control for what feels like forever, but it's been about 18 months now that we've been talking about the potential for YCC. Check this out. As reported by Bloomberg, the Treasury buyback plan will boost market resilience, US debt officials say. Department has said buyback programs will begin in 2024. Buybacks will seek to add liquidity, improve cash management. So what does it mean? Well, the world's largest economy, the world's largest largest market worth $24 trillion, the U.S. government debt market, the U.S. treasuries market, as it's called, is no longer as stable as it used to be. Career bond buyers for insurance and pension plans continue to lock in higher and higher rates on long duration bonds, thinking, hey, I got 4% on a 30 year fixed treasury. I'm good. My insurance fund, my pension funds are good. Well, guess what? That doesn't really matter much when those long duration treasuries continue to creep up and up and up, meaning that you can't sell one dollar of the bonds you bought yesterday for one dollar they become worth less because the current treasuries you can buy for better interest without getting too much into the details here just know that when the government starts to buy its own debt this is what we call the doom loop where the government is printing money to buy its own debt to control the interest rate on its bonds and that is to stabilize the bond market so that the government doesn't have to pay as much interest on each bond you see with less buyers for the debt the actual interest rate on the bonds goes through the roof. And we all know interest rates are already so high that if the government doesn't control the interest on the debt, it simply won't be able to afford all that interest on the debt. So they become caught between a rock and a hard place. And this is where we get the inflationary doom loop, where the government starts printing its own money to buy its own debt so that it doesn't have to print even more money to finance and pay for its debt because there's just not as many buyers. As Arthur Hayes says, follow the money. A lot of noise is being made about possible China capital flight. Something is going on because the CNY has depreciated almost 15% year to date. Anyway, the point is he asks around and he deduces here through some macro logic that China is in fact seeing capital flight. And he says, here are some possibilities. China's buying a lot of gold. This is something that he has hypothesized will be the outcome for many years. China is paying down USD offshore debt of some of its banks and corporates. This is also possible. Some wealthy comrades are fleeing the coop. Also possible and probably a mix of all three of these things. But most importantly, what China is not doing, buying more US treasuries. As you can see here, this chart is down and to the right. This is not an increase in US treasury holding by China. Remember, China was the big buyer of US government debt during the great financial crisis. Saudi Arabia, all these countries, the BRICS nations were big buyers of US government debt treasuries. But since the current administration made the strategic decision to seize Russia's assets and to cut them off from the US dollar, they created a rift in history where no longer did people trust the clearly permissioned financial system of the US dollar, of US government debt. And this has all been leading up to what we've seen, which is less and less buyers of US government debt, which means that the yields go up. But of course, at some point, the US government has to control that yield. They can't continue to pay higher and higher yields forever. It's just too expensive. So what do they do? They start printing money to buy their own debt, which sends asset prices through the roof. Yield curve control will send Bitcoin to a million dollars. That has been the motto since we started talking about yield curve control in early 2022. And we got word just today that it's about to start happening. But bear in mind right now, Bitcoin did fail to get back above where it was when the Fed made its announcement earlier this week that they said, you know, potentially a hard landing in the future. Well, we don't really know. We're going to keep rates higher for longer. Again, all of this to me 
is just lip service. Because as soon as the banks start breaking, they jump in with a money cannon. As soon as anything starts breaking, boom, they can lower the interest rate by two, three percent. That would be literally six to nine months worth of interest rate hikes and boom, one meeting. So it just doesn't really matter to me what they say or where these dot plots show, because as soon as the need emerges, they will jump in and boom, yield curve control, boom, two percent drop. All of this is really important to say that we may get amazing buying opportunities in the lead up to all of this starting. Remember, all of these forces are converging. You have the beginning of stimulus to the economy through yield curve control. We know we've hit peak rates here. They can't raise them any higher. It's already breaking the treasuries market. We know that the Bitcoin halving is coming. We know that the Bitcoin ETF is coming. At this point, the risk of not having Bitcoin is crazy, in my opinion. And I believe that, of course, markets will do their best to screw you out of this opportunity. So, of course, there's going to be some crazy drops or there should be some crazy drops coming. At least that's how the poetry is usually written. But in my opinion, if there is some crazy drop down to prior lows to 20K, anything around there, maybe even lower, those are going to be huge opportunities. I can't predict the future. I have no idea where it's going to go. But I know that I'm a massive buyer on the way down of Bitcoin, especially Bitcoin right now, but all of my precious cryptocurrencies. Because as soon as Bitcoin gets lifted through these variety of factors that I believe will be extremely favorable for 2024, there is going to be a massive, massive bull run. That's my belief. But it's also written in the stars because on March 23rd, Pluto, the planet of destruction, death, and rebirth, is moving from Capricorn and entering into the intelligent, airy sign of Aquarius. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius was 1778 to 1798. What happened around 1778? What does that year mean? Think about it. Because believe it or not, the stars have actually predicted some of the biggest changes in Bitcoin's history. We'll be doing an astrological deep dive here because it's good fun. But just remember, there are so many factors lining up for 2024 being an instrumental year. Not just for Bitcoin, but for a lot of stuff. As always, if you guys enjoy this, if you're as hyped as I am, you know what to do. Smash that like button. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to subscribe. You know, it really helps the channel out. We're going to be growing aggressively here. And as the market picks up and turns risk on, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite altcoin picks. It just hasn't been right yet. The market's too choppy right now. And it's just not quite baby altcoin season. So anyway, if you like this video, hit a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit a thumbs down. I can handle it. And remember to click on this video. It's even better than the one you just watched. And I'll see you very soon on the next episode.